Ever see a rhino? Sure! <laughs> I like it! Hey there, I'm your host, Jeremy Burke Miller, and today we're talking about Bebop and Rocksteady, their origins from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Outside of Shredder and Krang, Bebop and Rocksteady are the two most iconic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles antagonists. For over three decades, the dim-witted team has fought and generally failed when against the Ninja Turtles, first as toys in the 1987 cartoon series, and then in the comics and thereafter. In the Jungle Book? The gun-toting warthog and rhino are popular favorites who have played pivotal parts in many of the most important turtle plots. They finally made their big screen debut in the movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. But before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. This'll make it better. Bebop and Rocksteady Origins, TMNT 1987. Enter the Shredder is the second episode of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series from 1987. It delves into the origins of each of these fascinating characters' transformations. April O'Neil pays a visit to the turtles inside their home, where they are napping after the rigors of the previous day. She seeks their assistance in finding the Technodrome, and they go through the city's sewage system in a quest to find it. This would have been situated right beneath the now demolished Manhattan Security Services building. When they arrive though, all they discover is water, and tread prints. Michelangelo is certain that the entire Technodrome is movable. Elsewhere, Shredder is moving the Technodrome in its departure beneath New York City. Enraged that his powerful foot soldiers were defeated by a group of turtles, Krang summons him to the depths of the Technodrome. Krang, a gelatinous entity that resembles a sentient brain, is also disappointed that Shredder has been unable to supply the wicked extraterrestrial with a synthetic body in order to lead his troops. Shredder makes a weak justification for their lack of protection as Hamato Yoshi and all his turtles wander the sewers. Krang then claims that when Oroku Saki used the mutagen to kill Hamato Yoshi, it actually strengthened him since he got the powers of rats. Saki takes up on this train of thinking and thinks that if he exposes his own goons, together with wild animals, to the mutagen, he would be able to destroy Yoshi and all the other turtles. Meanwhile, the turtles in April have returned home to Splinter. Splinter believes that his old adversary, Oroku Saki, is actually the brain behind these robotic ninjas and volunteers his assistance in locating the Technodrome. Meanwhile, two roadkill Rodneys, which have erupted from the sidewalk, liberate a warthog and a rhino from the city zoo. Back underground, Splinter, as well as the turtles, come across the Technodrome's tracks and treads. They're getting closer to finding it. Elsewhere inside the Technodrome, Shredder persuades two street gang bangers, Rocksteady and Bebop, to participate in an experiment that would allow them to exact revenge on the turtles and other gang members also volunteer. The mutagen is used in this experiment, as well as the captive rhinos and warthogs from the municipal zoo. Two robots were dispatched to steal the animals, dragging them towards Bebop and Rocksteady so that they could make contact with both of them before the mutagen stuck. Though Rocksteady is skeptical, Shredder assures them that it will work. April's boss at Channel 6 is dissatisfied with her progress on the robbery of high-tech scientific instruments and reallocates her to the robbery of the warthog and rhino from the municipal zoo. April runs into the turtles costumed as breakdancers outside of the Channel 6 office. She persuades them that perhaps the zoo robbery will bring them straight to the Technodrome. Straight to the Technodrome! Two hours ago, a Rhino and a warthog was stolen from the Central Park Zoo! Meanwhile, Splinter has discovered the Technodrome, only to then be captured by a member of the Roadkill Rodneys. All of the turtles climb and fall down through a tunnel created by the Roadkill Rodneys at the zoo, but leave April on the surface. They land at the Technodrome's feet where Leonardo discovers Splinter's walking stick. The turtles approach the alien vessel, knowing there is a trap waiting for them. The turtles are quickly trapped in a corridor with closing walls, and are almost crushed until Donatello can rework a panel. They are then attacked by robots. They are nearly plowed over by a large, spiky rolling contraption. Finally, the turtles discover Splinter tied and bound from the rafters in a vast chamber. As Leonardo attempts to attack him, Shredder appears with his four footbots and invites them to become part of his foot clan. He also implies that they owe it all to him because he transformed the turtles with the mutagen. When the turtles refuse to cooperate, Shredder summons the mutant warthog B up and Rhino Rocksteady to attack them. But they, together with the four foot robots, are easily vanquished. Splinter is freed by Leonardo, 
and he along with the turtles flee the Technodrome. Meanwhile, April has dispatched the news wagon. Bebop and Rocksteady break through the streets, laser guns blazing as Splinter and the turtles return to the city's surface. The turtles beat them once more, this time by bringing them into the municipal zoo and capturing them in a prison. April arrives just in time to film Rocksteady and Bebop's capture, and gives Splinter and the turtles a ride home. A solitary roadkill Rodney digs up through the earth, freeing Rocksteady and Bebop from their cage, and informing them that Shredder now desires to talk with them. Rocksteady replies that they would prefer to stay in their prison than be hauled below ground. Bebop was initially an African American human mobster who worked for Shredder and was associated with the thugs including the likes of the fellow mutant Rocksteady. After his legion of foot warriors were unable to stop the turtles, and Krang recommended that the Shredder develop his own mutated soldiers to combat his foes with skills similar to that of the turtles, Shredder devised a new strategy and recruited two participants for his research. Rocksteady and Bebop both agreed to go through the process in exchange for superhuman abilities and to be able to inflict retaliation on the turtles. As a consequence, Bebop transformed into a warthog human hybrid, complete with twin turtle plates on his shoulders to symbolize his new role as a Shredder enforcer. Bebop would now help Shredder carry out his ideas. Bebop possessed the incredible strength of his beast counterpart part. With the downside of his looks, despite the fact that the change made them bigger and tougher, the Shredder's choice of research subjects was less than brilliant. Both Rocksteady and Bebop were tough, but not intellectual. For most of the series, they were used for reasons. Nonetheless, the Turtles believed them to be a threat, despite their idiocy in combat, owing to their tremendous endurance and stamina. And as such, they frequently utilized their brains to deceive them, rather than confronting them directly. However, their efforts at overpowering the Turtles Turtles appear to fail on a frequent basis, owing to their inexperience and goofy demeanor, which results in them being beaten both verbally and physically by Krang and Shredder. Despite his alleged lack of intellect, Bebop is constantly hired by the Shredder and is allocated randomly to various assignments that nearly always fail badly. Nevertheless, in their last appearance in the first season of Red Sky, Bebop and Rocksteady appeared to gain some intellect and spoke and joked about less. They made their farewell appearance in the finale of season 8, Turtle Track. Bebop followed his master as soon as Krang attempted to open a transdimensional vortex to Dimension X. He isn't seen again later in the series, which might mean Krang and Shredder put him as well as Rocksteady to work, doing mundane physical labor, which even they couldn't mess up. However, once the turtles smash the the engine of the Technodrome, the stronghold is dragged into a massive hole by a monster plant. The fall breaks the Technodrome's interdimensional portal, though it is proven to be operational in the series finale, stranding its residents in Dimension X. Bebop and Rocksteady either die or are abandoned by Shredder and Krang during some period after this, as they do not come back to Earth with them during Season 10. It's also possible that, like in the books that inspire the TV program, he and Rocksteady uncover the Eden worlds within Dimension X, and spend their remaining years as beasts in its wilderness. Aside from that, when the turtles arrive, Bebop's human form may be seen in a streetscape with the rest of the gang members. Rocksteady was initially a Caucasian and American male member of the Foot, a gang of outlaws. Rocksteady was a small and portly blonde Caucasian guy who wore army khaki trousers that were eventually replaced with regular beige cargo pants, as well as army headgear on his skull in his transformed form. Because of Shredder's experiments on him and Bebop, Rocksteady turned into a half-man, half-rhinoceros. As a result, Rocksteady possessed the incredible strength of his beast counterpart, with the drawback of his looks. In the 2003 TMNT, neither character had an origin or prominent segment. Look at me! They've turned us into freaks! TMNT 2012. Ivan Steranko served as a volunteer throughout his conflicts in Iraq, Yugoslavia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and then again in Iraq, as revealed in his biography in The Wanted Rocksteady and Bebop, before becoming a part of the Foot Clan in 2013. It is unclear how he came into touch with Oroku Saki as just a business partner. In Serpent Hunt, Steranko reveals that the Shredder and he had known each other for 11 years. Anton Zek shot Ivan Steranko in the eye, ostensibly by accident, and at some time during their friendship, resulting in Steranko's iconic diamond eye. In the segment, Enemy of My Enemy, initially, Ivan Steranko appears to be acquainted with the Shredder, with an offhand remark that they're old buddies. During the turtle's struggle with the Shredder, Steranko is knocked to the ground by the device 
designed to subdue the Shredder. In the Legend of the Kuro Kabuto, Steranko is shown to gather ancient relics, and is seen to possess Excalibur, and also the legendary Spear of Destiny among his collection. He even has the ability to discern the differences between a counterfeit and a true artifact. He was shown to have a fascinating history with the skilled thief Anton Zack, whom he was assisting with a loosely defined assignment that was apparently unintentional at the time, and who also shot out the right eye of Steranko's. Steranko would go on to pay through his nose for the mystic dagger. According to Fong in A Chinatown Ghost Story, in Serpent Hunt, Zack and Steranko had been trapped in Steranko's refuge for months after the Krang had taken over the city. With nothing to consume but cockroaches with ketchup, they created a plot to flee the city, but it fails when the turtles release Karai. As a result of their actions, Zek and Steranko are kidnapped and taken to Shredder. Steranko tries to convince the Shredder that Zek would be more valuable as a regular human, after he gets transformed into a grotesque warthog for attempting to steal the Kuro Kabuto. In the segment, The Pig and the Rhino, Zek and Steranko are enraged by their fate as freaks and assault Shredder, who easily defeats the new form duo. Saki instructs the two, once more, to find the mutant Kirai, and execute his directions or suffer the consequences. While exploring a rooftop, Steranko encourages Zek to forego their purpose and instead pursue a new goal, the eradication of the famous Ninja Turtles. During this time, the duo settles on the moniker Rocksteady and Bebop from a music truck. Steranko develops an instantaneous liking to Rocksteady, while Zek can't tolerate his new idiotic nickname of Bebop. Despite failing their own objective, the two succeed in Shredder's goal, where they kidnapped Karai inside an alleyway. Off screen in the Noxious Avenger, Baxter Stockman tells Bebop and Rocksteady to go in search of Reagent X, the chemical needed to make a mind control serum. While they are searching for the ingredient and a mutagen bottle, the turtles step in owing to the evident vehicle named after them nearby. At the end of the section, Rocksteady Rocksteady and Bebop flee. In the Deadly Venom segment, Rocksteady appears with Bebop at the beginning of the episode, when he is charged with fighting the now mind-controlled Karai, who easily defeats Steranko. In the Fourfold Trap segment, Rocksteady is a part of a complex trap set by Karai to catch the Turtles and April. It succeeds with April now imprisoned alongside Karai and the turtles exposed to torture tailored for each of them. Rocksteady as well as the other henched mutants try to ambush and beat Splinter before he gets Karai's operations center, but Splinter effortlessly overpowers and overcomes them before proceeding on his own quest to save his boys and April. In the Annihilation Earth Part 2 segment, Rocksteady apprehends April and Splinter as they penetrate Shredder's lair in order to strike a ceasefire with Saki versus the Triceratons and save the Earth from the Heart of Darkness. When Tiger Claw arrives to report on the demolition of their weapons stockpiled by the Turtles and Karai in City at War, Bebop and Rocksteady are seen protecting the doorway to Shredder's new lair. In Broken Foot, Rocksteady accompanies Bebop and Tiger Claw in defending Aumen Chemicals against an attack by Leo, Shinigami, Karai, and their Foot Ninja. After hearing of the dismantling of their fraud money laundering activities and imprisonment of the Purple Dragons and Hun by the NYPD. Bebop and Rocksteady are unhappy about the big blowout because Shredder and Krang treat them like servants. Shredder invites them to see the demise of a planet after finally appreciating their contributions. Because the two buddies do not want to ruin the planet, they battle against Krang and kill the Rock Minions. After they stop being henchmen, Bebop and Rocksteady transform into superheroes instead of criminals. Bebop along with Rocksteady makes a brief cameo at the end of the Super Shredder. In Requiem, Bebop, Rocksteady, Fishface, and Razar assault the Ninja Turtles in Coney Island in order to distract them from the Super Shredder. After the battle, he and Rocksteady mock the Turtles while they fled. Bebop battled the Turtles in Awari as they arrived to defeat Super Shredder. The Turtles were blasted and destroyed as they attempted to hack the traps he had set. Bebop was present in End Times when Kavaxis revived Oroku Saki, and he, like others, was terrified. Kavaxis was liberated when Orokusaki destroyed the Seal of the Ancients. Bebop and Rocksteady fled in fear. IDW, issue number 7 of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Villain Micro Series, talks about the backstories of these crazy villains in detail. The story opens with Bebop getting hit in the face. Rocksteady has been kneed in the stomach, and both of them are writhing on the floor. They were thrown out of just another group for being incompetent. Back in their filthy apartment, the two express their dissatisfaction with their lack of gang power and food. Rocksteady is thinking out loud about ideas for getting quick money, 
but Bebop, enraged, smashes a hole in the wall and declares they cannot continue doing the same thing. They have to do things differently, become a new Bebop and Rocksteady. They are at a bar conversing with a man who is working for a man who worked for the infamous Foot Clan. He informs them how awesome it is to work for the Foot, and how they've been taken over the Metropolis, and how the Shredder, the leader, is a formidable force to reckon with. He promises him that he'll take him along on another job he gets. After some time as low-level foot goons, the two of them are given a chance to better their position in the form of an invitation to try for a special unit led by Oroku Karai. Bebop and Rocksteady go through a rigorous training routine that lasts a long time. Their last test is actually an all-out group combat in which the last two survivors gain the opportunity to become mutants. Bebop and Rocksteady choose which animals their DNA will be merged with. Karai informs them that the two are not prepared for the last test to determine how they will function in an uncontrolled setting. Karai and several foot ninjas are accompanied by Bebop and Rocksteady to a conference with Jai Fei Tong, who is the head of a group called the Ghost Boys, which is a triad group based in Chinatown. Karai expressly informs the two men that their sole role is to be present and exhibit the Foot Clan's might. Zhang is astonished by the Foot Clan's capacity to create mutants at the meeting, because she's only known one, Elipex. Zhang and Karai leave their subordinates to talk business over tea. Bebop and Rocksteady, unable to remain silent for over a few moments, Strike up a discussion with a few of the Ghost Boys. They remark how great it is to be the strength in a gang as formidable as the foot, as well as how terrified the Ghost Boys must be, having never seen a freak before. Karai had just persuaded Zhang to put aside her pride and surrender to the Foot Clan inside Zhang's office. They hear a disturbance outside and are surprised to discover all of the Ghost Boys on the floor, with Rocksteady and Bebop standing over them. Karai is enraged at the pair's defiance. Zhang believes it was all a part of Karai's plan and instructs a ghost boy to murder them. Rocksteady charges towards a ghost boy who is preparing to fire, smashing through a wall. Bebop and Rocksteady pursue Zhang, while Karai battles off troops of the ghost boys. They find another route through many more barriers and get the upper hand on Zhang. Bebop and Rocksteady rest at a railroad yard. The two try to blame the entire affair on the ghost boys and are afraid of being tossed out of the foot, or worse. They decide to just return to Shredder and inform him that the now Ghost Boys provoked a brawl and Karai fled to accompany them. But suddenly, a troop of Foot Ninjas led by Karai appears and attacks them. Karai informs all of them that they have disgraced the Foot Clan as well as disgraced her, and she is minimizing her losses. The Foot Ninjas launch an attack, first looking to have the dominant position due to their sheer numbers. Eventually, Rocksteady and Bebop's strength is too much for their opponents, and they kill them all. Bebop and Rocksteady beg Karai not to toss them out of the group vowing to behave better in the future. Karai is taken aback by their determination to stay in the clan, despite an effort to eliminate them. Karai pulls an ammunition clip from a rifle, tosses it inside Rocksteady's mouth, and sets her blade against it, only one step away from executing him. She informs them that she has discovered that they lack finesse, and are only capable of violence and devastation. She tells them that they can remain, but their souls are owned by the foot. Bebop and Rocksteady are back at their old apartment, celebrating their first win as mutants, and being permitted to stay in the Foot Clan. They drink, sing, and reflect on how far they've come. Bebop asks why they came back to their initial location with all their negative memories. Bebop glances at the hole he made in the wall, and decides to complete the job. The structure falls down, and the men laugh. Interesting facts. The turtles are nicknamed after some of history's greatest famous painters and sculptors, but they're not the only animals with art-related names. Given their past as two gangbangers, it's undoubtedly unexpected that Rocksteady and Bebop would get their names from reggae or jazz, but that's precisely what the two characters did. Bebop, the towering African-American guy who will evolve into a warthog, is named after a kind of jazz music. Rocksteady, the small, stocky Caucasian guy who transforms into a rhino, takes his title from Rocksteady, a style of Jamaican music considered a forerunner to reggae. The initial TMNT comics did not have Bebop or Rocksteady, instead they were invented and developed by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles creator Peter Laird while negotiating a toy line agreement with Playmates. 
who wanted additional toys to be released. They didn't have much personality or history at the time. The majority of the background and origins, particularly their names and personality, were revealed after they were introduced in the 1987 animated series. After producer Fred Wolf instructed him to include more mutants, writer David Wise rounded out the characters. Anyone who has read the comics would recognize that they were typically dark and grim. Most of the time, Rocksteady and Bebop are everything but dark and grim, being too stupid and foolish to achieve anything. This is is something that irritates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles creator Peter Laird. In an interview, he stated that if he were to still be in charge of the franchise, he would not have so many ridiculous, idiotic figures like Rocksteady and Bebop, and that things would be a lot more serious. Bebop and Rocksteady are exceedingly, terribly stupid. According to a running humor in the numerous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles publications, programs, and games. How stupid exactly? In a segment of the classic animated series, the pair were accidentally trapped in Krang's brain extraction machine. The program would finally determine that there was no data to extract, implying that the two were simply devoid of knowledge. Rocksteady and Bebop would also have a fascinating connection to another freak in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle world, the turtle Slash. Slash was introduced in the original anime series, as Bebop's pet turtle, who would be altered by Rocksteady to perform a job assigned by Shredder. After escaping the pair and also the Technodrome, the turtle Slash would be a part of a plot to make the turtles appear bad by framing them for causing damage to a municipal monument. Slash has a natural hatred towards turtles and is typically described as being psychologically deranged, as well as being immensely strong and capable of handling all four turtles in one go. He would frequently appear as an opponent of the Turtles in the show, but would subsequently become a comrade of the gang in various comic and animated iterations. Rocksteady and Bebop have been inept for decades, from their origins as ordinary human street criminals to their present mutated forms. The two have consistently failed to complete the objectives assigned to them by the Shredder and Krang, particularly when it came to murdering the Turtles or stopping their good actions. Success would arrive in the new IDW Turtle comics where Rocksteady and Bebop seem to do something they'd never accomplished before, kill a turtle. Given their notoriety, it's hardly surprising that Bebop and Rocksteady were initially planned to appear in the 1991 film, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Regrettably, turtles created by Kevin Eastman, as well as Peter Laird, would be opposed to the inclusion, most likely because they disliked the characters. With the concerns, the film was forced to create new opponents in order for the turtles to battle. As a result, the film introduces Toka a mutant alligator turtle, and also Razar, a mutant gray wolf. Despite the film's and characters' mixed critical reaction, Razar and Toka would go on to appear in the following comics and cartoon series, but never in the lead roles as Bebop and Rocksteady would command. Bebop and Rocksteady were also set to appear in the 2014 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film as two of the most popular villains, especially among diehard fans, it seems to be the reason that the filmmakers would want to incorporate them in some way. It came out that they'd have to wait once again. Given the amount of effort that would go into developing a movie with five CGI lead characters, the producers felt that having two additional CGI characters in Rocksteady and Bebop would be too much to work on on top of what was already being done. Given how much the series fans liked the characters, it's only natural that selecting Bebop and Rocksteady took time. Rocksteady was played by Stefan Seamus Fairly, well known for his professional wrestling career, while Bebop was played by Gary Anthony Williams, best known for his humorous appearance on the Boondocks and also Malcolm in the Middle. The two would establish remarkable synergy in their roles, providing for entertaining on-screen interaction and prompting producer Brad Fuller to equate them to Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello, Batman and Robin, Charlie Kelly with Frank Reynolds. All these famous pairs pale in comparison to the original terrible twosome, Bebop and Rocksteady, the unkempt underling underdogs. Bebop and Rocksteady have been a part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles world since 1987. Whether you remember them as Shredder's psychotic mutant mammal minions, or find the best reason for watching Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows that's not Megan Fox or Stefan Amell. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Say your prayers, titles.